The first tip is to serve to the glass. From beginner all the way to advanced level, players will just struggle more. You don't want to serve too fast. You also don't want to serve too slow. You want to serve at medium pace. This is going to allow you to have enough time to get to the net position, which is the main goal of the serve. Then you want to run to the net straight after the serve, so you're in a great position to start the point off by attacking, and you've got the net, that is where you want to be. Serve down the tee 10% of the time. So 90% of the time, I want you to go to the glass. And then in order to not be predictable, I want you to go down that tee. Tell your partner where where you're going to serve. This might allow them to move a little bit in the optimal position for where the opponent might return to. If your serve is good, step a little bit closer to the net because it's unlikely they'll be able to lob and you might be able to smash it out. Add backspin to your serve, not side spin and not top spin. Never ever double fault. I know that's obvious, but seriously, it's so easy. You've got two chances on an underarm serve. It's very, very easy to get the serve in. So yeah, guys, today we're doing 100 paddle tips in 10 minutes. I don't have long to say this, but those were all about the serve. I'm gonna keep them kind of in category. So as you move on, some are gonna be about the smash, some are gonna be about volley, some about bandekas. Before I continue with the next 90 tips, just make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, and drop a comment on any videos you'd like to see in the future. Right, these ones are gonna be about the forehand volley. So practice the forehand volley just as much as you would the smash and the bandeka, if not even more. I think it's on one of the most important shots out there. Add backspin to your forehand volley. Aim your volleys at the opponent's feet. Also aim before and just after the white line. This keeps them guessing and keeps the opponent thinking. Middle, feet and corner. So volleys down the middle are always good. People have to move to the middle. Feet is good, we've discussed that. And then corners, if you can get a volley to hit both walls on the double glass, a lot of people are gonna struggle to get that ball back. Focus on spin over power. Spin is more important. You can practice your forehand volley using a basket. So get a basket, fill it with balls, go on the court on your own and simply just practice. Change the speed of your volleys. Keep your volleys as consistent as possible. You want people to be scared to play a ground stroke towards that volley. You want to force them to always have to lob. Finally, I want you to step in with that left foot if you're right-handed. This will give you more power. It will allow for a better shot overall. You can get more spin as well. Back and volley. I want you to play this shot slower. This isn't really, I'd say, a huge winning shot. Aim it down the middle a lot of the time with this one. It's a very percentage shot. Play your back and volley towards the cage as well. I think this is the best opportunity for a winner if you can play a back and volley to that cage and it can die. Add backspin to your back and volley so the ball stays low off the glass. Your normal preparation at the net, I want you to prepare more like this in a backhand position because it's very easy to come like that. A lot of people are very quick like that, but a lot of people are slower to prepare that backhand. When the ball comes right at you here, it's very easy to block like this. It's very awkward to block like that. So I'd prepare like this. If a shot comes at you there, use that backhand volley. These next tips are gonna be about the bandeka. Make sure you contact the ball right out in front of you. Have really early preparation and turn side on as quickly as possible. Have a big follow through when you play the bandeka. Add that backspin so the ball stays low off the glass. I've got a video called Learn Slicing Paddle. I'll leave a link in the description below. Treat it like a volley, but with a high ball. Let the ball drop massively. Do not play the bandeka up there or here, off screen basically, where I am right now. I'd say ear height, head height. Same with the forehand volley, play your bandeka to the middle to the feet and to the corner. When you're close to the net, you can play the bandeka fast, but when you're further away from the net, I would need you to play it slow. You have to play it slow to give yourself time to get back to the net position. Commit to the bandeka fully. Play your bandeka, I'd say 80% of the time, diagonally. This is a lot harder for the opponents to defend. Right, some kick smash tips, I know everyone will love this. Contact the ball above your head. Add top spin to the ball. I've got another video on that. I'll leave the link in the description below. Make sure your feet are planted and you have that early preparation where you side on and then you're gonna play the shot. Pop your wrist. Make sure you hit the ball so it bounces about midway up the court. It has enough momentum to then hit the top of the glass and ping out. Only smash when it's necessary. And when I say necessary, I mean rarely. Like a lot, unless you have like an unbelievable smash. You know Jake from the other videos, he's literally cut out the smash from his game right now because it was just ruining his game. He's playing so much better now that he's prioritizing the bandeka. Use the continental grip. Obviously this is for the smash, but also pretty much for every other shot. So how do you do this? Create a V with your hand like this, put it on your back and then go down. Use the fake smash where you're gonna go up for a smash. Oh and then you're gonna play really, really slow. It's so the great thing about Smash, you unlock a new shot. Smash to the cage, it gives you more variety. If you wanna to practice top spin, start by slowly smashing towards the cage or the back wall because that will help you practice. But you can practice it slowly just by going to the wall 
or the cage. These next few tips are really good for working with a partner and creating like a dream team that are very hard to beat. Give your partner positive reinforcement after every shot, no matter if they get it in or they hit it out. Tell them where the opponents are all the time when they're getting a ball. The best time to do this is when your partner is being lobbed. You can tell them if the opponents are approaching the net or if they're staying at the back of the court. Don't steal their balls. <laughs> and if you do do it, apologize and then clarify that it was their shot, not yours. Tell them things in between points that you notice the opponents are doing. For example, oh, every time he goes up for an overhead, he hits it out. Before the match starts, decide what you're doing when the opponent smashes. Is it gonna be you that's gonna run forward and get it and while your partner covers or is your partner gonna run for all of them? Watch where you're playing the volley. Sometimes my partner will be playing every single shot diagonal, forehand to forehand, and I'll be playing shot diagonal, backhand to backhand. That's not playing as a team, that's two individuals playing diagonal. Some defensive tips now off the wall. Let the ball come out in front of you. Do not try and dig the ball behind you like this. Oh, it's horrible. Play even slower than you usually would because when the ball comes off the wall, it has even more pace. It does not need a lot from you. Lob a lot. Play maybe 75% of the shots from off the wall down that middle. If you get a really tough low ball, bend your knees, prepare your racket very, very low and softly try and get contact on the ball. Don't flick the ball off the wall, like this, this motion here. If the ball bounces high off the wall, then it gives you a chance to attack. And again, I'd say you probably want to attack this maybe 50, 60% of the time. The rest of the time, you still just want to lob. Some corner tips now. When defending in the corner, block the corner so that you know any ball that comes to your left side will hit the side wall and any ball that comes to your right side will hit the back wall. I watch people tense up so much when the ball goes towards the corner. Relax and follow the ball. When returning the ball from the corner, I need you to play a lot slower. If you can, try and play a lob from this position. When the ball goes to that corner, try and follow it as much as possible. It helps you move a lot more fluidly rather than just being like, ah, oh, I need to spin quickly and then you're gonna be disorientated and you won't get the ball. Some tips for your paddle racket now. Make sure your paddle racket suits your game style. If you like to play with control, get a control racket. Focus on comfort being number one. So this is the Royal Paddle Whip Extreme, extremely soft and comfortable racket. Browse on Everything Paddle to help you choose. Obviously, I'm going to plug Everything Paddle at some point in this video, but seriously, it's amazing if you want to help choosing a racket. Literally every single racket has a video explaining the rackets. You've got a racket quiz on there. And of course, you can contact me if you want any actual advice. Try not to obsess over the rough surface. I know it's cool. I don't think it makes an absolute huge difference. Put a fresh overgrip on the racket before any important match or tournament. Apply a racket protector. This will increase the lifespan of your racket. Take good care of your racket. Don't buy too cheap. If you buy too cheap, you'll have to buy twice. Here are a few psychological tips to get the edge on your opponent now. Take every single point as it comes. Don't think about the score. Don't think about the fact you're losing. Think about playing the best paddle you possibly can in each point. When you're losing badly, go back to basics. Delay your opponent, especially if you're losing. When you're losing, your opponent will want to play as fast as possible. You need to slow them down and try and break that momentum. Stay as calm as possible and take your time. Again, this is a little bit sketchy, but I've done some things in the past where I might pretend to tie my shoelace in a game or I might not give them the ball in the easiest way. I know I'm a bit of a dickhead, but the game's the game. You've got to try and win. Some tips now against tennis players in general. They're going to play really, really fast. It's very easy to get sucked into that and play bam, 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 bam. I try and do the opposite, which is slow it down as much as possible. Lob a lot more. Keep tennis players at the back of the court. Force them to use the wall. They won't like it. Try and avoid giving them easy overheads as most of them are going to have a very good smash. Play even slower against them than you would the average opponent. Challenge a good tennis player to a 1v1 cross court. This will really allow you to adjust to how fast they play. Finally, we've got some general rules and tactics that you must follow if you want to improve your paddle. Every shot you play should be designed for you to take the net position and to keep the opponents at the back of the court. Have a huge variety of overheads. Play diagonal most of the time. It's a lot harder for opponents to defend. Follow lots of paddle accounts on Instagram. If you just surround yourself with paddle, when I learned the bandeka, I just eventually just watched so many videos of people just doing it. It just kind of clicked in my head and one day I couldn't do it. The next day I could just do the bandeka perfectly. Be on your toes all the time and use the split step before every single shot. Put your opponents in the fridge, which basically means just targeting one opponent. They don't even necessarily have to be the weaker player. If the fridge is used on you, it's up. 
works. What I would do is do it back to them and try and stay as calm as possible. A good way of improving fast is to have one lesson a week and then play at least three times a week as well on top of that. If you do that every single week for six months in a row, you'll improve massively. If you've come from tennis and squash, you're gonna have advantages, but there is a ceiling. You have to try and learn paddle. The hundredth tip, here we go. <sighs> Feels good. Play consistent as possible. Listen to this now. I play as consistent as possible. I try not to miss. The main goal of me of giving you tip is what? To win more matches. Practice consistency. Practice going games without missing. Count your mistakes in matches. You might be surprised at how many you're making. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoy. Check out everythingpaddle.co.uk. We've now got paddle packages as well for beginners, intermediate and advanced players. Appreciate it. Let's get to 5,000 subscribers.